fretboard is tapered and ready for inlay. Position markers will be inlaid both on the fretboard face and on the side as you see here. Let's begin with the fretboard face. We will use mother of pearl dots. Inlaying round objects such as these dots is easy. If you wish to inlay other shapes, the task becomes more difficult. We'll keep it simple and stick with inlaying dots for this tutorial. There are several common ways to lay out your fret position markers. Probably the most common is one dot at the third fret space, one dot at the fifth, one dot at the seventh, one dot at the ninth, two dots at the twelfth, one at the fifteenth, and one at the seventeenth. If we take away just the third fret space dot, the fretboard looks less cluttered and it is still legible to the musician. You've likely played an instrument without the third fret dot and not even noticed that it was missing. You can also add a second dot to the seventh fret space. This is also common. If we now remove the 15th and 17th fret position markers, you'll notice that the inlays have a nice symmetry about them and that they are roughly centered along the fretboard's length. This is the layout that I'm going to use because I like the simplicity and the symmetry. You may think that I'm throwing lead playing musicians under the bus by denying them position markers above the 12th fret. Well, as you'll see later, I take a less aesthetic and a more utilitarian approach to the layout of the side dots, since the side dots are essentially for the musician's eyes only. In fact, as long as you have side dots, you can make the fretboard face as simple as you like, perhaps with just one marker at the 12th or even with no position markers at all. That way you can really showcase the grain or figure of the board. Okay, we have our layout, so let's get started by marking out the dot locations. Your fretboard should still have a center line from when we marked it out for cutting the taper. Here I am simply tracing over the line to make it more visible to the camera. It is a good idea to double check the line with a center finding ruler at a few fret locations to make sure that the line is indeed centered. My first dot will be centered at the fifth fret space. With a straight edge, I mark out an X from all four corners of the fret space. The center of the X should intersect our center line perfectly. This is where the first position marker dot will be located. Now the seventh fret space will be divided into two position markers. Here I make two X's, one in the space below the center line and one in the space above. Now I mark out the 9th for 1 position marker and the 12th for 2 position markers. The center of each X is carefully marked out with a center punch. I couldn't find my center punch, so I used a drill bit with a brad point instead. I use a Forstner bit that is the exact size of my mother of pearl dot. The Forstner bit will leave a flat bottom for the dot to seat against. It's a good idea to first test the fit on a piece of scrap. 
I am using a fretboard offcut from the previous lesson. I set the depth so that the bit doesn't go all the way through the material. It's a perfect fit. So perfect that I may not be able to get the dot back out again, and that would be okay. Dots are not expensive. If I want to try to recover it, however, I can tap the scrap piece on a block, as you see here. And sometimes it works. Now for the real thing. With the drill press turned off, I press the brad point of the bit into my first center punch mark. I press it down hard so the brad point bites into the wood. Then I set the stop collar on the drill press to hold the bit in this position. With one hand on the workpiece, I start the drill. I only go down a hair before stopping to check the fit. I'm checking to see how proud the dot is of the fretboard surface. My goal is for the dot to be just a hair proud of the surface, so I still have to drill just a little bit further. Okay, now that one is good. I can move on to the rest of the board. I have a good grasp on how deep I think I need to go. Furthermore, as you'll see, I have a solution for holes that I accidentally drill too deep. Okay. This hole was drilled too deep. Notice how the dot sits below the fretboard surface. Now you can backfill the hole with some material such as wood dust, or if the hole is too deep enough, you can simply add another dot. I sometimes like the latter solution, because doubling down on the dots means that there is no risk of sanding through your dots later when you level the board and sand the radius. To secure the dots, I am using water-thin superglue. Only the water-thin stuff is thin enough to wick down into the hole. It's critical to use a whip tip on the end of the superglue bottle and to only apply a drop of glue. You can see how a single drop wicks all the way around the pearl dot. Notice how I keep paper towels handy to dab up excess glue before it hardens. Safety first, I always wear a respirator when I'm working with CA glue, although the expression on my face implies that the mask may not really be working. All kidding aside, CA glue is nasty stuff, so wear a respirator. Now let's move on to the side dots. First I clamp the board up in a vise. I set my marking gauge to the center of the board's thickness. Then I scribe out a center line along the length of the edge. I scribe the line very lightly so that the line will sand out later. Next I mark out the side dot locations with a center punch. 
I use a center finding ruler to find the centers between the slots. The third, fifth, seventh, ninth, fifteenth, and seventeenth fret spaces will each have one side dot. The twelfth fret will have two. Looking at the center punch marks I made at the 12th fret space, I can see that one mark is a little bit off. An easy mistake to make, and fortunately, an easy mistake to correct. I shake a little bit of rosewood dust over the marks and brush it in place with my fingertips. A drop of water-thin superglue completes the fill. Then I spray with accelerator so the glue cures instantly, and I remark the 12th fret space. For side dots, I am using plastic rod stock. You can order this from various luthier suppliers. Just like with the fretboard face, I want to test fit a piece into my scrap material first to make sure my drill bit is the right size for my plastic rod stock. Sometimes you have to round over the end with sandpaper in order to remove any frayed edges on the rod stock. Okay, now it's just barely in. A few taps with a mallet and it is seated. Just a drop of water-thin superglue. Again, I keep a paper towel nearby to dab up the excess. I spray with accelerator. And I take the rest of the rod stock off with a pair of nippers. Now let's plane this back to a fresh surface just to see what the fit looks like. That's a good fit. Now back to the board. For each hole, I carefully place the drill bit on its mark. Then I run the drill in reverse for just a second. Running the bit in reverse like this allows the bit to center itself over the mark. Now that it's centered, I can switch the direction of the bit and drill the hole. The depth of the hole doesn't really matter here. Even if it's only a 32nd of an inch deep, that's still enough to seat the rod stock. Now with my respirator mask on, watch as I drill and inlay the rest of these side dots.
Thank mm-hmm. you.